Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see from the title and the description, we've got something a little bit crazy today. So, as you guys know, I'm always experimenting with Cyber Dragon, trying to come up with the next competitive build. And today we're trying out something that I didn't think was gonna work out. And honestly, I didn't even know this was a thing. And that is Diabell Star Cyber Dragons. So, I didn't know what Diabell Star was. I had heard about it here and there in passing, but I never really looked into it. But after hearing how it did at YCS in Indianapolis and that everybody was teching it in a bunch of different decks, I decided to check that out. And we decided to make a little bit of a package. And because of how self-contained and small the package is, it allows us to play Cyber Dragon as we normally would with just a little bit more support, another 2500 beater, and some spell and trap cards for recursion. Well, some spell cards for recursion. And that trap card that, uh, can negate a face-up card on the board. We can basically hit anything, which, you know, we love that. And we even have a spell card, a quick play spell that can almost be like a pseudo board wipe if played properly. So I tried it out and it was a lot of fun. And we actually won a match against one of the top decks in the game currently. And I wanted to show you guys the deck build that I'm using and that gameplay. And I will warn you, it's a little bit of a longer game because we did go all the way to game three, and while game one and two were decently sped, sped up, game three was a grind. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Enough from me. Let's go check out the deck. All right, guys, here's the deck build we went with. Uh, real quick, we're just going to run through it. We ran one Regulus because we are running three Clockwork Knights, and being able to search a Regulus should Clockwork Knight get destroyed. Or if we send Clockwork Knight to the graveyard to summon Diabell Star, it's just a little bit a little bit of nice synergy for anybody that doesn't know what diabell star does real quick you can special summon this card from your hand by setting one card from your hand or field to the graveyard you can only special summon diabell star the black witch once per turn this way you can only use each of the final effects of diabell star the black witch once per turn this card is normal summoned or special summoned you can set one sinful spoil spell or trap directly from your deck and then during your opponent's turn, if this card is sent from its owner's hand or field to the graveyard, you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard. If you do, special summon this card. Which, and then you would summon it and then set another card. As far as sinful spoil cards, uh, you know, we'll just run through the monster quick. We're playing one Cyber Dragon, just for space. We play two Galaxy Soldiers, one Chimera for OTKs. Ash, because you need to play Ash Blossom in that format. Uh, three cores to get us into our stuff. One Naxter for recursion. Double Hurts. We're not playing Machine Dupe. Again, space. And the Cyber Dragon as a whole doesn't really need to play that stuff. It's just, it's nice to have because, you know, you get to combo out. But in reality, it is a win more card and you need to be able to play without it. Uh, three Emergency. One Repair Plant Standard. One Rev System. Because we're also, if you actually look at our extra, we're also trying some other stuff. I'll explain that in a second. Power Bond for Chimera. Uh, Cyberload Fusion is probably the only card in here I didn't really need, so I might, I would probably mix it. But I mean, it is a searchable fusion. You can steal games sometimes. Triple Droplets because we have a bunch of extra cards on the board thanks to the Abel Star, so it actually makes the big droplet more playable. Here's our first Simple Spoil card. Simple spo Spoil. Simple Spoils of Doom. Eh, tongue twister. Rikalia, I hope I said that right. I'm trying to talk fast because, like I said, the game plays a little bit longer. Uh, target one level seven higher spellcast monster. You control apply the following effects while face up. That monster is unaffected by other monsters' effects this turn ends. Is sent to the graveyard during the standby phase of the next turn. Cool thing about that. Uh, if you use, the, if you have to use this on your turn, she'll die on your opponent's turn, and then you can bring her back and set another card. Uh, second effect. This is the one I, I like. All monsters your opponent. Currently controls lose attack equal to the target monster's attack. If their attack becomes zero by this effect, destroy them. So if your opponent has a bunch of monsters that are 2,500 or less and you use it on the Bell Star, you just wipe the whole board. That's why I played it as a one of because it is technically good going second and it could be a nice little interruption if played properly. Uh, wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils. I love this card. Add one Diabell Star monster from your deck to the grave or graveyard to your hand. So it's, a, it's our easy way to get up that card monster. During your main phase, you can banish this card from the graveyard, then target one Sinful Spoils, spell a trap that is banished or in the graveyard except Wanted Seeker of the Sinful Spoils. Place it on the bottom of the deck and then draw a card. Cyber Dragons, we love any kind of draw power. Even one card makes a huge thing for us. Triple Clockwork to break boards and to power up our monsters, making this thing a 3k. Uh, one Realm, again, for OTK. Overflow, triple and perm. Sorry if I sound a little weird at the beginning of this. Um, 
my microphone was acting up, but it should be good now. Anyway, back to what we're saying. Simple spoil of betrayal. Silver, Silvera, Silvera. Send one Diablo Star monster from your hand or face of field to the graveyard, then target one face of card on the field and negate its effect. When your opponent activates a card or effect in response to your Diablo Star monster effect or one of your simple spoil spell or trap cards, uh, you can banish this card from the graveyard and negate that opponent's effect. You can only use one simple spell of betrayal, Silvera effect once per turn so obviously we could search this off of diabell star uh we can actually send the diabell star we have on the board or from our hand to negate when we do that we actually trigger diabell star to bring herself back by getting by giving up another card and then if the, your opponent tries to activate anything in response to diabell star or one of our sinful spoils uh sinful spoil cards you can banish this to negate so it's dope all right extra deck eternity mega fleet twin Fortress, uh, Rampage, cards we're trying out, obviously Typhon, uh, this card's dope, you can basically make it with anything, as long as it's the strongest monster on your board, you can even, if Core is your only monster on board, you can turn it into Typhon, which is nuts, but then you can't summon for the rest of the turn, so you gotta be careful with that, we got in Double Infinity, Double Nova, Seeger, we're trying out SP Little Knight, and that's the reason we're actually playing Rev System, because with Core, Rev System and Realm make Core a one card SP Little Knight. And you can actually get its other effect because of Almirage. We're also using Mascarena because we can actually summon out Diabell Star along with other monsters, link into IP Mascarena, leaving Diabell Star on the board. And then when we link away Diabell Star to make another monster, uh, Diabell Star will actually bring herself back. It's pretty cool. But uh, as far as SP Little Knight, you could summon Core, add Rev System, link into Almirage, Rev System, bring back Core, make SP Little Knight. And if your opponent has a monster, you actually get, uh, if your opponent has a card, you actually get Espina Little Knight's first effect because you used Al Mirage. In the same vein, you can go Core, Realm, play Realm, grab Chimera. Now you have the two monsters. You can either go directly into SP Little Knight or you can link it to Al Mirage first or even use Chimera's effect to get Power Bond and then link. Like, it's, it's dope. Uh, side deck, Lightning Storm for back row. I just didn't know what to put in, so I just threw in Lightning Storms, which I'm kind of glad I did. Simple Spoil of Subversion Snake Eye. This card is cool because it's searchable by by Diabell Star, and it literally targets the face of monster and puts it into the spelling trap. It doesn't it doesn't destroy, and a lot of times your opponent can't respond to it. And once it's in the spelling trap card zone, usually they can't really mess with it. It's called a cycle and same things. Sound graveyard in case we win up against graveyard decks. Another Recalia for going second because it just it's a it's a pseudo board wipe. Or just let you swing over monsters. And then we were playing summon limits if we end up going first. Now, I did. I went over that fast. We're going to go jump into the gameplay because I'm excited for this gameplay. Alright. If I recall, game one, we went second. Sorry, let me move my mouse. Alright. As you can see, our hand's not terrible. But, but, unfortunately, I have no experience against Rescue Ace. So I didn't know what cards to hit or what cards to stop. So that's why I actually Ash Blossom on the very first card. What the hell? Sorry. Okay. It turns out he was, uh, this is what I was talking about with the Diabell Star stuff being teched in other decks. It actually goes really good to Rescue Ace because there's a card that lets you search out a fire monster, which is what he's gonna do now. He played Wanted, grabbed Dio Bellstar, he discarded Imperm, now he's summoning Dio Bellstar, now he's going to use Dio Bellstar to search another one of the Sinful Spoils. This one lets him get a level 1 Fire Monster. Yeah, original Sinful Spoils, Snake Eye, which lets him get Hydrant. Which lets him, in turn, get the, the big uh, Rescue Monster, whose name escapes me at the moment. And then, because of the Graveyard Effect, he gets to banish Wanted, bottom deck the, the Snake Eyes he just used, to now draw an extra card. So he just made up for all the cards that he gave up. It's kind of silly. Now he links in the, links in the IP. With the, two, with the Hydrant and the Lifter that he had. And then he banishes the Lifter to summon Turbulence. Which Turbulence is the good one that lets him fucking set four. There he goes. Now, I I just cut out some footage, but I basically had to run through all these cards because I had no idea what any of them did, so I kind of had to figure it out as I went. Uh, against our deck specifically, Rescue Ace has a slight disadvantage. Slight because they can eat very easily recover, but they're all machines. So, of course, Cyber Dragons love machines. Our opponent set a, a fifth card before passing. We went Cyber Emergency. 
we end up searching out OG Cyber Dragon because of that weakness. So we start off with OG Cyber Dragon. And of course, we're gonna contact Hughes. Wait to see if our opponent does anything. The thing about a lot of this, a lot of the trap cards for uh, Rescue Ace is they need a Rescue Ace monster on the board. So I was like, let me try and get this monster off the board as fast as possible. But their spell cards have a lot of ways for them to summon out rescue monsters. That's why you have to get, you get when you set the four, you get a good balance up, so that way you can recover. But IP Mascarina can't link it to anything right now. He uses rescue, which summons one from the graveyard. And then if you summon a hydrant, you can, if you have hydrant, you can steal one of your opponent's monsters from the graveyard instead. So we're like, all right, shit. This is where I kind of make, I start kind of misplay a little bit. Like I said, I didn't really know what the deck was going, was going for. But we try to core. He ends up using another trap card to just negate Core's effect. And not the negate the search, he negates the entire effect. Yep, that one. Contain. Which sucks because now we can't link we can't link it with the turbulence. So instead we discard Chimera to summon Naxter. Naxter obviously is another Cyber Dragon, we can contact use with that, because we are playing two Chimera. Um two me uh Fortress Dragons. Ugh. This is another another misplay right here. I end up summoning the, out the Chimera. Uh, I should have probably went OG Cyber Dragon because I should have expected him to stop the uh, the Naxter. But he ends up getting rid of the Naxter, so now we can't we can't contact fuse with the turbulence. But we summon out Chimera. We attempt to use Chimera's effect to get Power Bond. But unfortunately, I believe he also had an Imperm. Yep, that was the last the very last card he set. So no power bond. Because honestly, if we had got power bond, we probably could have killed him that turn. We end up doing the only play that makes any sense. Now looking at it again, it really doesn't. Well, we could. It depends. Because if he he could have IP masqueraded into like unicorn discovered wrong monster, but we could have also linked into Seeger, and then swung at turbulence. But IP masquerade was just waiting, so we just ended up linking off the IP masquerade. Contact using off the IP of Mascarena. But now we can't get over his monster, which is unfortunate. So we had to pass turn. And he plays Emergency. Which lets him special summon a monster from the deck. Double checking Turbulence, see if there's anything I can do about it. He ends up using Lifter, adds a Rescue Ace a spell card. I think he gets a field spell. Yep. Oh, well, he activates Alert. Which gets, which adds him one from the grave back to hand, I believe. And we ended up surrendering because he just was getting too much advantage. So we just went to game two. This time we're going first. And this time we opened up uh, both some Cyber Dragon stuff and the Bell Star stuff. So now we can show off a little bit what we're we talking about. So like right here, just looking at what we have, we can actually, we could have discarded Hertz for the Bell Star and still got a search. But instead we summon the Hertz, we get the Amirage. Just so we have the Amirage for destruction protection. We go to use Hertz. Grab our Cyber Dragon. And now we're going to activate Diabell Star. I could have. Hear me out. I could have got rid of the Almirage. And then use Naxter to summon uh, back Cyber Dragon. I could have got stuff a little bit better, a little bit different. He ends up chaining to our Diabell, uh, Diabell Star monster. And that lets him special storm from the deck. We end up grabbing. Sinful spoils because we're expecting him to destroy our monster with this quick effect. He switches it to face down defense while well, he now has a meter. I want to make sure I can keep playing, that's why I ended up grabbing that. Now, we also decided to just use this link material just to get rid of this monster. We make SP Little Knight. SP Little, this card comes in clutch. We just straight up banish this monster. We're like, no effects for you. He can't switch. He can't switch SP Little Knight to face down defense because it's a Link monster. So we set one. We activate Clockwork Knight. Most of his monsters are already machines, but now the ones that aren't are, and we get a nice little buff to our attack points. SP Little Knight at 21 sounds crazy to me. We also have one in face down, so we can get back a Diabell Star. I wish I had an Ash for this Pot of Prosperity, but I do not. I gotta let it go. We also have, I think, two pops set up for Cybernetic Overflow. He 
he get he sees like everything he could possibly ask for. <laughs> he gets hydrant, which is, again gets the deck going. There goes hydrant. Hydrant gets in the search. He activates Hydrant. I, I contemplated SP using SP Little Knight, but I'm just like, that. I don't think that's worth it right now. Especially when he can just grab stuff like that. Double checking the conditions for SP Little Knight, just to make sure I knew what I was doing. Cool thing about SP Little Knight is you can actually banish to, uh, SP Little Knight or another monster you control, and then another monster you control. It doesn't have to be one of yours and one of your points. It can both be yours, and you get them both back at the end of turn. Which you'll see why that matters in a few. Alright, so now he went into Typhon. So here's the thing about Typhon. Super powerful, he just turned Hydrant into this big ass beat stick. We're gonna kill it immediately. The thing is, he can't summon for the rest of the turn now because of Typhon. So he just locked himself out of doing anything else for the entire rest of the turn. So now we now that we're basically safe, we end up using Seeker to get our DFL Star Monster. We don't have to worry about him summoning any monsters. All he's gonna do is set one face down, I believe he did. Yeah. There's not, literally nothing he can do because he cock blocked himself. So at this point, we start off with emergency, grabbing core. We wanna try and bait an imperm if that's what he has, or an ash. He ends up using Lifter. Gets a special summon a monster from hand. Again, double checking SP Little Knight. New cards always throw me off, so I'll, I'll be checking them like a million times. Sorry, I thought I cut down any dead space. And he gets Turbulence out, which is mad annoying. So the reason I didn't go for like... I could have went for... Uh, Cyberdark Realm, but with no spell cards, there was no point in grabbing uh, Chimera. So instead, I ended up grabbing, I believe, Cyber. Nope, I grabbed Repair Plant. And then, of course, we contact Youth the Turbulence. <laughs> I could have used SP Little Knight 2 to make a bigger monster, but we didn't want to do that. Now, we use Diabell Star. And we actually send off our Clockwork Knight. Boop. Use her effect. Grab Silvera. So we have our negate. Then I decided to keep on going. I was like, I, I might as well push the advantage. He's got two cards in hand. He doesn't have. He hasn't been stopping any of my monster effects. So we end up using Naxter. Not Naxter. I'm sorry. Repair Plant to search Hurts, which will get us another monster. So we use Naxter, ditching the Hurts, summoning the Naxter. Because Naxter's effect, you know, to summon back from the grave, uh, is only after, it locks us into machines after we use his effect, which we're doing now. We could actually keep on going without, we were able to play all our cards without getting interrupted at all. But I didn't take into account a Nibiru. So we end up chaining SP Little Knight since he activated a monster effect, which this is why this card's bonkers. Because now we can target two of our own monsters, banish them, and then we get them back at the end of turn. So we get rid of SP Little Knight to keep the interruption, and we get rid of Dia Bell Star because we have the trap card face down, so we want to keep that alive. And then he makes a he makes a Nibiru token with the, our other three monsters. Which makes a pretty big token now that I think about it. 2318. That's okay. Now we look at our graveyard, and guess what? We have a graveyard effect. We banish Cla the Clockwork Knight that we sent, discard our core, grab Regulus, which is a good card. And you know what he did? He, uh, if you guys see, he put the Nib token, I'm sorry, he put Nibiru in defense mode, which only has 600 defense. So now we have an Omni Negate, we go to our battle phase, and we punch over the Nib. So now we still have a pretty beefy token and we get two monsters back at the end of turn. Boop. 
phase two. Let's see if he was gonna activate anything else. End phase. And now we get back SP Little Knight and Diabell Star. That doesn't count as a special summon, so we don't get another search off of Diabell Star. Even though I think her effects once per turn, so you wouldn't get it anyway. But just saying. So we have an Omni Negate, we have a face-up card negate, and as you see, our opponent gave up. We uh, we had what? Two, four, six, eight. We had over eight thousand on board. So yeah, we were looking uh, pretty good at the end of that. Now, when we went from game one to two, I didn't leave. I took out, I cut out the siding portion of it because all we did was side in our uh, summon limits, but we didn't even see them, so it didn't matter. This time, this matters because we do see our sides in this game, and I'm going to apologize now because this is the long game. I'm going to try to maybe skip around a little bit, but it's 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 long. <laughs> it was a very big back and forth. All right, so we end up side, signing out our summon limits. Obviously, we're not going first. We side out our Clockwork Knight since most of his monsters are already machines. And we end up putting in Snake Eye because it's a good source of removal. Lightning Storm for back row. Basically, if we use Lightning Storm, he has to either find a way to negate it or he has to, it forces out his back row. And since we already picked six, we were picking six cards to get rid of, because we also get rid of Overflow here, we end up putting a, in a Cosmic Cyclone, which is hilarious because that one out Cosmic Cyclone ended up actually helping us. I was looking at what else I might possibly want to get rid of, and honestly, nothing was coming to mind. Maybe I could have got rid of Regulus, but I'm I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> so we put in the one more Cosmic Cyclone again. It's a heavy, it's a pretty heavy back row deck. Granted, everything's chainable, but still. So now we go into this game, and now we're going second. And we did open up uh, Snake Eye. We actually opened up a couple of Diabell Star cards. Unfortunately, we didn't open up any Cyber Dragon cards, and this is what I mean about uh, about Cyber Lord Fusion is it has a lot of times where it can be a dead card, and maybe we could put something else in, like maybe like Call by the Grave or something. Plays this dude, searches Field Spell, activates Field Spell. Oh no, activates Emergency first. And see how they all have all Quick Play spells and, uh, and trap cards, so that way they can chain everything. Let him summon a dude tribute out, tribute off one another rescue ace monster, and now Hydra let him get a search. Now he gets advantage the dude he just tributed to summon out turbulence. And then he gets a set four, which is still bonkers to me. Oh, he he only set two. I don't remember why, I don't can't think of a reason why, but my guess is he sided in too much. Or he opened up nothing but his spells and traps. I don't know. I don't know why he would only pick to get two. Contain was the monster negate and rescue summons one from grave, I believe. Uh, there's alert, which I believe lets him add one. Yeah. I'm still... Again, I know Rescue Ace is one of the top decks, and I definitely need to look more into it before I uh, go to my next regional. But I was just very like, what is going on? <laughs> kind of just let him do his thing. I didn't have any interruptions as it was. Let's see, now he sets he sets two more. He definitely had a handful of spells and traps. Now it comes to us. And we have an it, we have a lot of our own uh, hand traps. Oh, he sided in D-Barrier, which stopping us from fusing really doesn't bother us especially with this version of the deck we obviously have our Diabell star card to keep playing uh linking and xyz is actually what we prefer right now we only need fusions if we're going in for game but i'm pretty sure it was to stop our contact views which makes sense but we already sided in other removal for example simple spoil and uh, now we activate seeker we got diabell star this is the other good thing about it is because we have the dead uh the dead cyber load we knew exactly what car we were getting rid of so i guess that's okay and now we get to search considering what the rescue ace cards do all he's going to be able to do is you know stop us from doing it in this case he's destroying it instead of negating it so that that actually picks what car we're getting for us we just get another we just get another wanted double checking what it does i wasn't sure if that was the it's contained that negates extinguish destroys 
Do I got another snake eye? My bad. This would be, I recorded this like last night, late at night, so I, I forgot. So see, this is one of the reasons that card's a good side because of the fact that it's searchable. And now I set all my cards, not realizing that Wanted can be activated the, turn, the same turn that you actually played it. So we could have got another draw first. And considering what we draw, I was kind of mad that I did that. Because I probably would have liked to wait a little bit longer to have, like... To have that... To have Droplet so I can chain it if I need to. Ugh. I don't know why it was so hard to get that out. But now we get to Core. Looking at looking at what we got. Some in the core. Now, what do I search here? What would you search here? Let me know what you guys would have would have done here. Oh, it doesn't matter. Contain. <laughs> so now he negates the core. But see, we're also causing him to burn up cards, which is what we want. I decide what to do here. I believe contain stops me from using it to make uh, the special summon with it. So I can't link it away. I I ended up pausing here for a few minutes, a few seconds, trying to figure out why I couldn't actually just link it into an Almirage, but I'm pretty sure it's because it contained. This is just me just double checking my graveyard. Trying to see what I can do. So he's using. He's using Rescue to take my Diabell Star monster because of the fact that he controls Hydrant. Otherwise, he would be summoning a, rec a Rescue Ace from the grave. So that's a pr pretty cool. And now he's trying to use its effect to actually search, which would have got him into his whole engine. So we imprim it because we know that he's playing Diabell Star stuff too, and he's just going to keep on getting recurring advantage. He chains Emergency, which is fine. He gets out Turbulence. All good things. So now we we keep going. We've finally been to main phase. <laughs> Activates engraved to set, which is crazy, but it is what it is. The trap card you can't activate this turn. It's fine. So now he tries to use hydrant, and we're like, you know what? Let's not. We end up using Droplet, getting rid of both our cards to negate both Turbulence and Hydrant. No search for him and no setting for him. We were like, okay, cool. We can take some damage and we weaken Hydrant by a lot. We're fine. Not Hydrant, Turbulence. Sorry. Still getting mixing up all their names. So now he punches us for a little bit. 25 and 1250. Oh no, just 25. All right, now we go. Now we're still pretty behind here, but what we just top decked, we actually have, you know, some interesting interactions here. So, looking at our graveyard, we got a core. Here's what we do we're going to banish the core. As for what we're going to special summon, in this situation, with him having rescue ace monsters, we know he has, at least has a negate face down. We end up summoning Cyber Dragon. Why? Because he has two machines on the board. We can link them away. We can contact fuse them away. Then it shuts down all his spells and traps. Well, all his traps and the extra effects of his spells. And now he can summon another monster because of. Oh. So I thought that was turbulence when I negated it. It's not. <laughs> it's fire engine which summons a monster from the grave. Oops. So my mistake for saying the wrong cards, I just realized that what, what it is. They all look the same. They're all big, red, and do crazy shit. That one is unfortunately a warrior, so I can't I can't contact use that one. But we contact use the ones that are on the board. Bong bong. Now we're sitting on a 3k beat stick. He does get to keep this, which is unfortunate because it means his trap card still works, which is why he uses Contain on our fusion to turn off its, its attack points. Now, we end up actually using Wanted this time, <laughs> sending back Simple Spoils to draw a card, which was awesome. 
we activate Cyber Emergency and make a big misplay here. So we already used Core to summon. So we just added a Core for nothing. And I was devastated when I realized it. Now, we summon Regulus here, not only for the negate, but we equip... All right, my Cyber Dragon players out there, why do we just equip OG Cyber Dragon? Let me know down in the comments if you guys know. I'll reveal it in a little bit, but I want to see who actually realizes why us equipping OG Cyber Dragon is a good thing. Let's continue. Now we have Regulus on board to stop our opponent from doing anything crazy. And now we also have fodder for our Dear Bell Star monster. We end up getting rid of the core because we know the core is dead. We could have got rid of the Chimera Tech since it no longer has attack points, but it's fine. And we get Impermed. I contemplated just negating it just to get my card, but I was like, you know what? Nah. Instead, we move to Battle Phase. He has no more cards left on board to do stuff with. So we swing into his Rescue Ace monster. Punch over it. And then Regulus swings into his Diabell Star monster. <laughs> My Diabell Star monster. <laughs> now we go to main phase two. And now we're going to link away the Diabell Dia Star monster along with the um the zero fortress dragon so you know it wasn't completely a dead card it got to be used as material so yeah so why couldn't i link the core away that one time hmm. either way we got sp little knight so it turns out when you make sp little knight with an extra deck monster fusion synchro xyz or link it actually <laughs> it can actually send any card and banish it so we banish the field spell And now we go, we have two interruptions on board. I, I was feeling pretty confident with him only having one card. And then he top decks the crazy. He sends the monster we put into a spell and trap zone in order to summon this Dio Bell Star, the Black Witch, which is nuts. Because now he gets to search. And at this point I was like, should I just negate this? I didn't. Instead I banished it and banished my SP Little Knight. I still kept the Omni Negate on the board, which I felt like was the safest option because we can always just swing over his monster. He ends up sending another Wanted, which he can't activate because it's a quick play. So he just ends his turn. Let's double check in his grave, see if there's anything I need to think about, or worry about. He goes to end phase. He gets the Abel Star back. We get SP Little Knight back. So back to the trivia from last round. The reason equipping OG Cyber Dragon was good is because. Because Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon is such an old ass card, you can actually contact Fuse with a Cyber Dragon in the Spell and Trap Zone uh, with Machine Monsters on the board. Specifically, Fortress Dragon says Cyber Dragon, not Cyber Dragon Monsters, specifically Cyber Dragon, plus Machine Monsters on the field. The actual effect text says you summon it by sending these cards to the graveyard. It doesn't specify that the Cyber Dragon has to be a monster card. So it's kind of nutty. So, what just happened, uh, we attacked into his Wanted monster, I'm sorry, his Diabell Star monster, he got rid of the Wanted to summon it back out. Which then he then searched the other Sinful Spoil Snake Eye that lets him get a Fire monster, a level 1 Fire monster, so he can get Hydrant with it technically. Summons out Impulse. He chooses a monster with the highest attack and it makes it so I can't activate its effect. <laughs> we end up using SP Little Knight to banish the impulse. He was going to summon a monster, so I was just like, nah, we'll use Regulus. And since it was on the same chain, he didn't actually negate Regulus's effect, which he could have. And then because he, he sent his own monster to the graveyard as cost, SP Little Knight didn't banish. So I was like, alright, I guess. 
And now he goes to battle phase and is just able to swing over the, the SP Little Knight, which kind of sucks because I want to keep that card. SP Little Knight is a solid card, and Cyber Dragon players, we should be running it. The card's nuts. It's a great form of interruption and very easily accessible for us. And yeah, two turns in a row we, we draw Lightning, Lightning Storm, which was kind of crazy to me. Uh, we didn't want to do anything. We had to think about this because obviously we have the core in the grave that we can use since our opponent has monsters and we don't. We go with the Lightning Storm to destroy his monster because we know he's just going to bring it back. I don't know how many copies of Snake Eye he was playing, but he brings he brings back Diabell Star, which means if we can get over Diabell Star again, we don't have to worry about it coming back, at least not right away. He does get another Wanted. We end up using the core to get us Naxter. And we have a Cyber Dragon in Grey we can bring back, so we end up summoning the Cyber Dragon back. This was me, you know, processing, thinking about what I can do to get over this board. The simplified game state, which is where we kind of excel, but I don't. I wanted to make sure I didn't misplay as much as possible. Naxter gets us back Cyber Dragon, and that we actually link into Seeger. Seeger is still a good card. We just proceed to battle phase. Pump up the Seeger. And then we just swing over the Bell Star. Yeet. Now he has to overextend to be able to get his DFL star back. He draws. As you see, this is what I was talking about, about this game being very back and forth. Use the Y to get another DFL star from deck. Vanishes, vanishes to draw, which it's crazy that it does that. <laughs> Summons Hydrant, because Hydrant's good. Uses Hydrant to search. Now, at this point, I think I'm cooked. I started to think I started to think this game was pretty much over. But I was just like, you know what? Let me play it out. Let me not just quit like I did in the first round. Summons Turbulence. Gets a set four, which still disgusts me. Turbulence is set four. Three quick plays in a trap. Crazy to me. He does end up giving one of them up to summon Diabell Star. Okay, emergency. Bam. You don't have to tribute if you control Hydrant, it looks like. And then he sends it to the grave. Summons. From the banish, banish effects. Or special size summon effect to get another search. And now he gets rid of effect veiler, which is he probably would have won if he kept the effect veiler, honestly. But now he summons the Abel Star and now her effect goes off, letting him set another card. But it looks like he doesn't have any left. Because he did, he actually chose not to set any uh, any uh, simple spoil cards. He swings into Seeger, which is really weird to me. Because then we just pump up Seeger and kill his Diabell Star, straight up. He didn't set a card off of it. Swung into a monster that was bigger than it. I was very very confused. And then he uses Emergency's Graveyard Effect to set a Rescue Ace Trap card. Yes, of course you did. So he's got five set and they're all risk race cards. You guys see what's in our hand. So you see what we try to go for. So, so check me out. Draw phase. Ends up using extinguish just to get rid of our monster. Makes sense. We were, he knew as soon as we got the main phase, we we're gonna contact use all his cards away. Double checking what Lifter did. And of course, we just dropped the Lightning Storm. Destroy all spells and traps. I knew with with uh, the emergency in our hand, we could get rid of his board. But we had to get rid of that back row. Or in this case, force him to activate it. 
especially with that trap card being, uh, I th believe that was contained, so that's the negate. We don't want that. <laughs> He's over here taking out. He took. He takes our SP Little Knight, which is annoying. He gets to summon. He gets to add from deck to uh, hand, and he gets a special summon from his grave, I believe. No, from deck, even worse. So yeah, he just uses all of his spell, his spell and trap cards. Well, he's used his spell cards, his trap cards died. Contain, fuck contain. We can go Cyber Emergency. Now, we wanted to bait the Little Knight. So, we could have went Hurts and just normal summon Hurts and then contact use. But we wanted to get, we wanted to bait the Little Knight, so we ended up using, getting Core. Or at least I thought we did. Because looking at the grave. I lied, we went okay. Well, I guess we went hurts. Normal summon hurts. Now we contact use. Easy peasy. Hydrant and turbulence. Now we have a 3k Chimera Tech. We end up using Hertz's as effect, which he then SP Little Knights. If we had summoned the core, core's effect is mandatory, he would have just banished the core. But now we get to get an OG Sab Dragon. Which we can now just special summon because he controls a monster and we do not. And he has zero interruptions left. So we battle phase. Swing into Lifter. Kill it. And we have we have effectively broken his board. What that one card in his hand is, I have no idea. But it's his turn. And now we're in a very simplified game state. He's burned through a lot of his cards. We got it. We got up. Chimera Tech comes back as a zero, which kind of blows, but it is what it is. And now we are just waiting. Use Emergency to get a trap card back. But again, the trap card doesn't work because he doesn't have a Rescue Ace monster. So he goes to the battle phase and just swings RSP Little Knight into Fortress Dragon. And now at this point, he's burned through so many of his resources, I don't know how many ways he can recover. We draw, and we get Snake Eye. I, I thought about using it and just swinging directly, but with him having 7,000 life points, I didn't want to waste the card that could just remove a card from the field. So we just swing into our SP Little Knight. And then just go to end phase. Like, he would need a lot to be able to, to steal the game from us right now. I think he's already gone through three Hydrants and two Turbulences. He sets another one, sets a Monster in Defense. I was double checking to see if, if Snake Eye can hit a, uh, a face down monster. He hits us with a D Barrier for Fusions. Again, doesn't bother us. And yeah, as you saw, we top decked another Snake Eye, so we're just waiting. He put. A goddamn effect failure in defense, but I don't know what this guy was thinking. You could have took a few life points to keep that in hand. Without even needing the defusion, that would would have protected him from losing the from losing the game. He could if I had summoned Cyber Twin, he could have turned Cyber Twin's effect off. If I had summoned Rampage, he could turn Rampage effect off. That was not a card you should have put in defense mode. And then we top deck our Diabell Star. And now it is time to take back some advantage. So we special summon her, getting rid of one of the snake eyes since we have two. Activator effect. This time we do in fact try to set something and get impermed for I think was a third time. I was looking at what we can make. There's no reason to make IP. We don't have a third monster to be able to link. So we just end up swinging for 46. I love how the screen ended up changing because we were so far behind and now we're, we caught back up. We end up passing and I'm feeling pretty good. Like he kills our Diabell Star, we get her back. And we get to set another card. Cyber Dragon is just doing work. He does top deck Pot of Prosperity, which is crazy because Pot of Prosperity is so goddamn good. And now he gets the fish. A lot. But as you see, he has one starter. He got lucky on the last card and was able to get Lifter. Last card. And now I can summon the other dude from his hand because, because of it. Fire engine, which lets him summon for which just lets him summon one or add one.
Oh, I guess that's during the damage step. Never mind. So now he's got two monsters. And I think he put it in defense mode. No, he, he did not put it in defense mode. Battle phase by Cyber Dragon. He did good, buddy. Lily made a comeback because of Cyber Dragon. <laughs> Main phase two. And on to end phase. Now, looking at how much time we got left, I'm pretty sure this was the final turn. Or this was the last turn that really just like cemented it. Because we top decked the one Cosmic Cyclone. Remember, we only sided in one Cosmic Cyclone. And we end up hitting the contain. Which stops our monster from attacking, but we're, we're fine with that. Because then we end up using Snake Eye to put his monster into the Spell and Trap Zone. We may not be able to attack, but now he's left with just a 1700 monster that with, has an on summon effect. He draws. If he had a way to get our, uh, rid of our Diabell Star monster right now, that would be our the worst possible thing for us. Because we have no way to bring it back. But he just summons another lifter. And I don't know if I don't think he has any rescue ace spell cards left. He's got eight cards left in deck too. He links it to IP Mask. Okay, so th this is the end of the game. <laughs> he linked his two monsters into IP Mascarena, which does nothing for him because he doesn't have another monster to link with it. And he ends up surrendering. <laughs> I'm very sorry that last game was so long, but you guys were able to see how we were able to keep on making comebacks, how the game keep, kept going back and forth. Rescue Ace has an insane, insane recovery game, and we were still able to keep up and eventually win that game. Like insane the diabell star engine is really really cool and i'm gonna try maybe messing around with some of the other cards and see if we can find some really cool synergies with the cyber dragon with some of the levels and maybe we could turn this into a monster uh let me know what you guys thought of this video let me know if you guys have tried experimenting with this engine and let me know what other techs you guys have tried out maybe i'm missing something like i said i didn't even know about this engine until i made this video uh here's one last look at the deck i used again let me know if you guys end up seeing something else I should have tried. Uh, SP Little Knight's broken. I didn't really get to use Typhon in this game, but he, I have used him in other games, and he's pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys want to check me out on social media, those links will be down below. That's it from me, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.